Hello, and welcome to Cry Havoc Wargaming, dedicated to bringing you the uncommon. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is Ron, and today we're going to be doing a review of the official Frostgrave terrain made by Cromlech. So let's get started. I recently received a large number of various kits by Cromlech for Frostgrave, and um, I bought a number of buildings that are specific to certain scenarios. Uh, I have the Silent Tower, Sacred Temple, the Well, the Enchanted Well, the Haunted Houses. I will soon be receiving, a, still in the mail, is the Summoning Tower and a Graveyard. I can't really say this is a review of all the products they make, but I do believe I have a general idea of what these uh, products are like, and it is with that that I will continue with this review. Now, um, these are all MDF kits, uh, with the exception of uh, a resin bell that comes with the summoning tower, but in the most case, it's all MDF. MDF is best at representing wood. It's not really good at representing all the various surface techniques that they try to represent with it. That being said, uh, even though this is flat and just, just rastered to give the, the stonework look, uh, they are very cleverly engineered. The summoning tower itself is built in such, such a fashion that the walls all seem much thicker than they would really have been by, by having a lot of dead space and, and extra walls. Uh, the, uh, I think the engineering behind them is, is very, very well done. They are complicated models. Uh, they are certainly up there uh, with the most complicated MDF models I've made. Uh, I believe is a line, either, either these or the um, Black Sight Studios are probably the most complicated uh, MDF kits I've made. Uh, these are, are not pre-painted. It is normal MDF. They're a good value for the money. They aren't inexpensive kits, but they, they dominate the field. The scale of them is very, very impressive. Uh, the Silent Tower, for instance. The Silent Tower, when all put together, stretches out diagonally pretty much across the three by three Fosgrave playing area. Uh, so it definitely, and stands about that tall, uh, definitely dominates your table. Sacred Temple, pretty much the same sort of idea. To, when all laid out, the Sacred Temple scenario, all it calls for is a handful of columns. Uh, but the Sacred Temple package from Cromlech comes with not only those columns, but it comes with a flat uh, central raised dais area. Uh, it comes with entrance areas for a cruciform style temple uh, in ruin. A uh, very, very significant looking model on a, on a tabletop. Even the haunted houses. Uh, the haunted houses come with not only the houses necessary for the scenario, uh, but they come with a little fountain wall to add a little bit, a little bit more. Some of the pieces, the Sacred Tower, for instance, comes with furnishings, with a number of tables and bookshelves and uh, writing desks. So various uh, interior details that you can move around. Uh, there were some ladders with some of the kits, stairs with a lot of the kits. So and that's a detail that's often missing in MDF models. The kits went together very, very easily for the most part. Uh, the instructions were very clear. They come with instructions, unlike many MDF kits today. The instructions are actually available in the kit. They recommend dry fitting. I do as well. There was at least one occasion where building the model in a different order would have worked better, where a step could have been reversed. And I may have discovered that if I had been dry fitting. I'm still not sure I would have, because if you're just dry fitting per step, uh, it was a mistake. Something was done in one step that should have been done the beginning of one step when it should have been at the end of the next step. So um, the, that was a, a small problem, but it, it only was once on all of these models. I wouldn't call that an overwhelming difficulty. The models mostly went together well. They fit together well. Only negative thing I would say to them is um, some of them, almost all of the multi-floors had notches in the bottom of their bases, which no doubt would be to help with fitting and to keep them from migrating off of their lower fittings. Uh, and by this, I mean the different floors. But only a few floors had those reverse tabs on their tops. Uh, I, I would have rather seen more of that carried through. Uh, again, the Silent Tower is a great example. It, it's real easy to knock it and floors move and fall apart. They are very clever in how they made them multi-usable. Uh, I don't have the uh, summoning tower assembled yet, but it's supposed to attach to some of the tower pieces in the silent tower to make a more impressive tower out of uh, the two kits together. 
Silent Tower itself. For those of you who don't remember the scenario, it consists of three buildings, one large tower in the middle connected to two uh, other buildings by bridges. Um, the bridges all come apart for it, so you could take them down and use them entirely separate buildings. So a lot of flexibility with these items as well. So there you go. I, uh, I recommend these models very highly. I was very pleased with them and uh, look forward to getting them on my Frostgrave table. If you have any questions about these kits or if you own these kits and would like to make comments about uh, your experience with them, go ahead and do that in the comments down below. We also look for comments down below on further ideas for content that may interest you here on the Cry Havoc Wargaming channel. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit like. And if you would like to continue to receive videos like this to help guide you in how to spend your gaming money and time, then please hit subscribe. Until next time. Cheers.